InshaAllah always a reminder for myself that this teaching from Awliya Allah to bring out the best of character. Last time we talked about Hadith al Nawi and today to remind myself Hadith al Qudsi that holiness of the Hadith just below the rank of Holy Qur'an, it's so holy that it could have gone into the Qur'an, it has that much importance. And awliyaullah come into our lives and to give us an understanding, a depth of not just translating but from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad what Prophet wanted and wants for us to achieve. That the 15th Hadith of Qudsi, Allah says, I am as my servant perceives me or expects of me. Then continues, I'm with him as he remembers me. If he remembers me to himself, then I remember him to myself. If he mentions me in a gathering, I will mention him in a greater gathering. When he draws near to me the span of one hand, I will draw near to him the length of one cubit. When he draws near to me by the length of a cubit, I will draw near to him like a phantom, like miles in, in speed. When he comes walking to me, I will come running to my servant. Means these holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad is a compass. It opens up the direction in which awliyaullah will begin to teach their students. That Allah is reminding Sayyidina Muhammad I am as my servant thinks of me. What my servant, his situation or her situation, I am as they perceive me. So it means right there is a tremendous danger. Everybody has an understanding of the Creator according to their condition. Not according to the truth because Allah is clarifying, I am as my servant sees me. If my servant is an angry servant, he sees me as an angry God. I am as the condition of my servant. If he's vengeful, I'm a vengeful God. If he's critical, I'm a critical God. If he's intolerant, I'm an intolerant God. Because I am as my servant sees me. So it was a sharat and a warning for us. Don't think everybody's speaking the truth, they speak according to their condition. So life is like a chess game, sit and observe. When you observe that the character of a person who's trying to convey or teach Islam but he's angry and she's angry or they're angry. Of course their Islam is going to be very angry Islam. Everything about burning, oh Allah is going to burn you, burn you, burn you, burn you, burn you, Jahan, Jahannam because that's their condition. <laughs> if they're angry and critical every khutbah is going to be critical, everything going to be critical, critical, critical because this is how they perceive, this is their character, this is the color in which they see the world. And they want to convey this is the way Allah is going to judge. So the way of perfection was the way of muhabbat because they understood the danger. That before you try to describe Allah who knows himself will know his Lord, begin to know yourself before you want to talk about Allah If the person hasn't taken a path of taskiyah and cleansing and purifying, he doesn't know himself, he doesn't know what characteristic he has and he doesn't know or she, he doesn't matter if he or she, they don't know what type of influence they're putting on their belief. But when you sit and take away of taskiyah and cleaning, you're ordered by your shaykh, go and make your muhasaba, go make accounting of yourself every night. Find out why you're angry, why you're jealous, why you have all these different characteristics so that you can begin to know yourself. 
When you know the disease, you're busy all night long praying for a relief. If you don't know the disease, you don't know what you're praying for, you're not asking for anything, you say, I'm very good, perfect. If you know that you have jealousy and anger, all night long you pray to Allah, Ya Rabbi don't let me to die in qadr, don't let me to die in this type of characteristic, only you can give me a relief. Means the first step is to identify the sickness. So with the shaykhs they guide that, go make your muhasaba, make your accounting of yourself. Understand why every day what type of characteristics you have, what are your actions, what are you doing so that they can guide us to the best of character. And the best of character in which to see Allah is love, is love, is muhabbat. Very rare, very rare to find somebody talk about muhabbat to be loving and to have found Allah in a condition of love. That's the highest. They, they, they're taught, I've seen Qur'an classes, they beat the kids to read Qur'an. You think they're going to be grown up with love of Holy Qur'an or assimilate beating with Qur'an? So why are they so angry trying to teach the children? So means whom Allah guides is truly guided and it's a gift from Allah And the first gift that Allah gives is, go find the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Ahbab al Nabi Because they went through all of that. They went through the door and Allah guided them through the door of love and with love they found their Lord and they found an immense beauty of love. Even in their conditioning and their training, the sunnah of traveling, how can you find love? If you don't travel, the reality of the sunnah of traveling was that you're a king in your home and you pray the way you want to pray, you eat the way you want to eat, you wear the way you want to wear because you're a king in your own home. But Allah says, no, no, if you king or you want to be my servant, if you want to be my servant go out and visit my servants and learn servanthood. So as soon as we went out on the road in our tarbiyah, we did 25 years of this. As soon as you go on the road, you don't eat when you want to eat, you don't eat what you want to eat, you don't drink when you want to drink because you're a servant of somebody else. You're a guest in somebody else's home, in somebody else's event and you're meeting and seeing all their customs. They don't have the customs I had at home, I have to become patient and tolerant. If you're impatient, your job don't last but a week, you'll be thrown out. They say, oh that guy's a real angry guy, throw him out, don't bring him back here again. So it teaches you patience and humility. You go and you learn, oh Ya Rabbi, SubhanAllah you have so many servants, they all love you and they eat differently, they act and, and do different type of manners. You learn tolerance, you learn patience, exactly what the Sunnah of Prophet wanted. Go out and see the vastness of Allah's creation and see how Allah loves all His servants and how with their love they're worshipping Allah be patient and tolerant. Don't put your, your opinion upon everything, don't put your anger upon everything. So some people have visited nowhere, they sit in a village angry and teaching, that's not muhabbat. They didn't even learn the sunnah of Prophet that you have to make a hijrah, you have to be moving, you have to be continuously moving from place to place, event to event so that you can see Allah's creation and learn patience and tolerance. Then you learn how to be quiet, you learn how to, to absorb and to observe people. That was the way of muhabbat so they come and they teach. This holy hadith from Allah is teaching us that find the people of love. Because they will talk about me with the eye of love and I am going to be as they describe. Why would you want to find Allah, a version of Allah that's violent and angry and judgmental and continuously punishing, punishing, punishing? So Allah said, I'll be that way if you want because as soon as you take that path you begin to Judge not for you shall be judged, you start to become critical upon everybody. 
and Allah will hold you to account. No problem, you want this way, I'll be that way with you too. Go out and bother everybody but I'm going to bother you the most. So now came, came into our life and said, Astaghfirullah, Azeem Ya Rabbi, Awana Abdukul Ajeez, Da'ifu, Miskeen, O Zalim, I'm the worst of your servants, have rahmah and mercy upon me. I only want to teach people about khair and love and muhabbat. Then Allah said, I'm going to deal with you with love. Even if you made a mistake, I'll deal with you with love. Because you can't be more merciful than Allah Say, so you gave everybody my mercy and my rahmah, even you made a mistake, maybe what you said wasn't 100%, I will forgive you because this is how you treated my servants. So that's why awliyaullah are very forgiving, very loving. Their associations people can't understand, why are all these different people, why you don't make rules for them, why you don't do like this for them? Because they understood this way of love and muhabbat. Then Allah and the hadith begin to give the characteristic that it's not only love that we say by our tongue <coughs> but love by action. Oh if you just got married, can you imagine a moment where your wife is saying or your husband is saying, you don't call me, you don't text me, you don't communicate with me, every five seconds where are you, where are you, where are you? When you love your children. And you send them for the first day into high school, make sure that they have a mobile phone, make sure they got on the bus safely, make sure they got off the bus safely. What are you doing in school? I'm going to just drive by and see what's happening in the schoolyard. Everybody knows the characteristic of love. You don't have to try to lie to Allah because there's other madhabs they come and begin to talk about. You don't need to make zikr. You don't need to make these halakas, you don't need to make these associations. No, you're wrong because Allah described, these people of love, their actions are their love, not their tongue that they say, we love our Lord, but their actions are loving. And this is what Allah won't. He says, then if they are loving people and they love me, I am with him as he remembers. So now this is a characteristic, a loving person should be somebody who is continuously remembering Allah As you remember your spouse, as you remember your children, as you're putting them everywhere, thinking about them at every moment. What about Allah the source of all love and all goodness? So then He's giving the characteristics, Yo my lovers that I'm with Him as He remembers me and when He remembers me with Himself, I remember Him to myself and then means that He does His awrads, he does his zikr, he spends his time alone with his Lord and if he remembers me in an association. So then Allah says, oh so there are associations in which they remember Allah and his life is to continuously be making and praising the one whom he loves. And then Allah says, good for you because I'm going to be mentioning your name in my associations. Allah make a dhikr upon the servant. How is that even possible? We thought we came with just some water, some food and to have a, a nice time have some chocolates. It has such a magnificent weight that Allah says, your love is so pure that not even an intention of goodness is necessary. Your salah needs intention, kula amalun bin niyat except the zikr Allah, except things that are with love, there's no intention. There's no judging of love, Allah is not going to judge any love. Even they came with worst intention into the mafil and zikr, Allah dress them, bless them and forgive them. What, what could be a greater reward And Allah describing, they remember me silently, they do the zikrs. They remember me in gatherings, I remember them. And then they now start to draw near to me. They walk to me and I'm walking to them. They run to me and I'm running to them. It's not hard to reach, Allah's rahmah is infinite, Allah's mercy is infinite. Just His, his begging of us, take a step towards me, don't run towards shaitan, I'll forgive everything you've done, I'll remember you in, in better association. Sit by yourself if you can't make the zikr, put on a live broadcast, sit by yourself, mention Allah Allah begin to mention you. So of course they're going to have tasbihs, their life should be filled with tasbihs so that Allah will remember them, dress them. 
As soon as you walk Allah's walking, as soon as you run Allah's running. People complain, oh she gets three hours traffic. Imagine how Allah is sending a najat that you're coming through 6,000 miles or 3,000 miles or four hours of traffic. Allah wants it that distance, I don't want you next door to Him. I want you to drive and every step I'm taking away difficulties from you. Every step mushkil gusha, I'm taking every type of difficulty away from you. Filling you with infinite rewards so much so I can't show them in this dunya because you'll be glowing and you won't do anything. They said, Awliya Allah describe if Allah open His rahmah on earth of what He's dressed you with, you'll be sitting on your couch passed out fully in annihilation of Allah <laughs> You won't move, you can't work, you don't want anything, you mashdub. So they, they have to hide that in the account for qiyamah. When Allah describes His servants that they're shining and their soul filled with medallions. Medallions of what? Of zikrullah, of, of mentioning Allah loving Sayyidina Muhammad If their maqam became high, Allah give them a chair. Because this one, He remembered me so much, you went through every difficulty to be with me. In this yawmul mashar, in this day of difficulty, have a nice chair, relax, I'm going to deal with this creation. Allah described they have chairs. Some have couches, some have thrones. Allah's great, Allah's rahmah is infinite. We pray that Allah always inspire us towards goodness and to keep the associations of goodness. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifu wa salam wa mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Anyone whom sick Ya Rabbi grant them a shifa for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad grant them a protection of all bad nazar, bad energies, bad, bad everything Ya Rabbi that you're the only one who can guard Ya Rabbi Ahfazuna, guard us and protect us with your nazar, with your light, with your power and your qudra. With the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad nazar of awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.